الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى tells us in his glory, glorious book in Surah Fatir chapter 35 in the second verse بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما يفتح الله للناس من رحمة فلا ممسك لها وما يمسك فلا مرسل له من بعده وهو العزيز الحكيم Whatever Allah grants to people of mercy, none can withhold it. And whatever He withholds, none can release it thereafter. And He is the exalted in might, the wise. Now many such verses in the Qur'an teach us about Tawheed, about monotheism, about that it, there is only Allah. There is nobody else other than Allah with capability, with anything. We are all weak and we all need Allah. Everything needs him for everything. And he is the sole actor. And the verse is telling us that if Allah wants to send his mercy on someone, and mercy is, has many forms. Happiness, satisfaction, tawfiq. You know, there, there has so many forms. All the goodness, if Allah wants, it, wants to send it to someone, no one can prevent it. It will reach them. And if Allah withholds it, if the entire world wants to help that person, they won't be able to help him. So it, there is only Allah. That's, you know, that's what the verse is trying to, you know, ha and the, the whole Islam is, is all about monotheism, about Tawheed, about there is only Allah. You obey him, you ask him, you don't go to anyone else. He should be your first destination. And there's a beautiful hadith in, uh, in Tirmidhi, that's an uh, that's, uh, authentic one. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, one day, he said, and he's narrating, he said, one day I was riding behind the Prophet sallallahu when he said, Ya ghulam inni yu'allimuka kalimatin, ihfadi allaha yahfadhk, ihfadi allaha tajidhu tujahak, idha sa'alta fas'ali allah, wa idha sta'anta fas'ta'in billah, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامُ وَجَفَّتِ الصُّحْفِ Oh boy, he was talking to Ibn Abbas, he was behind them. I will instruct you in some matter. Be watchful of Allah and he will preserve you. Safeguard his rights, he will ever be with you. If you beg, beg of him alone. And if you need assistance, supplicate to Allah alone for help. And remember that if all the people gather to benefit you, they will not be able to benefit you except that which Allah has decreed for you. And if all of them gather to do harm to you, they will not be able to afflict you with anything other than what Allah had predestined against you. The pens had been lifted and the ink has dried up. So this hadith lays out a, a divine law. And the Quran is full of them. These are constants. Constants that will never change. Allah deals with us with very clear rules. If you are mindful of Allah, He will preserve you. That part by itself has so much, so much meaning. If you are mindful of Allah as you are looking, you protect your eyes from looking at things you shouldn't be looking at, Allah will protect your eyesight. If you protect your ears from gossip and backbiting, Allah will protect your hearing. If your legs take you to, to places like the masajid, to, to places where good is done, then Allah will, will bless them and will preserve them. If you use your strength to help others, Allah will increase it and will, will sustain it. If you want, if you take care to earn from lawful means, Allah will bless and multiply your wealth. It's an equation. You, if you are mindful of what Allah wants you to do and you do it, then Allah will protect you. If you don't, then he doesn't. That it's, it's a law. It's a law. It's, if you do this, Allah does this. If you don't do this, Allah will not do it. 
If you observe Allah's instructions in choosing your spouse, you choose someone with putting faith as number one above everything else, Allah will bless that union. If you are mindful of Allah when you are young and healthy, He will protect you in old age. Because remember, after, after, young, after youth comes old age with all the problems that could come with it. If you want Allah to preserve you and protect you in old age, then be mindful of him when you are young. So this is a very comprehensive instruction that can be expanded to all facets of life. Anything in this life that you do, if you are mindful of Allah, he will, he will help you and he will protect you. And is a law that's above time. It's above time, it's above place, it's above circumstances, it's above environment, it's above everything. It's a law that will happen. If you do your part, Allah will do his part. And be mindful of Allah and his order. And be mindful of Allah means be mindful of his orders and what he wants you to do. So if you are mindful of him in all your affairs, then he will protect and support you. Guaranteed. Allah is guaranteeing it in the Quran. That's the second part. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him with you. If you are mindful of Allah and his, and his laws and what he wants from you, when you get in trouble, you'll find Allah with you. He'll get you out of trouble. He'll send people to help you. Help will come from ways that you never, never imagined. But if you want Allah to be with you in, in support and in, in assistance and in help, you have to be mindful of his, of his laws and, and his commands. So if you want his love and his support and his protection and his, his com companionship, then you have to be mindful of his commands. The next piece, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ if you want something, ask Allah first. You don't go asking people that don't have things. You go ask the ones who have it. And all of us, none of us have anything. We only have what Allah wants us to have. The source is Allah. So if you want anything, you ask Allah first. That doesn't, that doesn't conflict with going and asking people as long as in your heart you know that only Allah will make it happen. Asking people becomes part of doing your part, not relying on it for, you know, for, you know, for results. The results will come from Allah, and you know that in your heart, but you go in and do your part. Because you cannot just sit at home and, and expect it to come. You have to do your part. If you ask Anyone else, if you put your hopes in anyone else, if you think anybody else is going to benefit you or harm you, Allah will disappoint you. If you forget about Allah, Allah will disappoint you, will make sure that you get disappointed and you will not achieve what you wanted to. If you have a boss at work that loves you and he's powerful, and, and if you think that that's what's going to get, you know, get you to stay in that job and get, get promoted, and forget about Allah, that Allah is the one who gave you that job, who's going to get you through the ranks. If you forget that, you'll be disappointed. Because you'll never get what, what you want. You have to ask Allah first. You ask Allah, and then you do your part. And sometimes Allah, ta'ala, out of his wisdom, he closes all the doors, except his door. So you come to him, you plea with him, you beg of him, because... He makes you recognize that truly nobody else can help you. Everybody is just as helpless as anybody else. Only Allah Taala has the power, has whatever you seek is, is with Allah. So ask for him alone. <laughs> So, and this, this is a law in, in, in monotheism. Allah is in the hadith saying that know that if all of humanity wanted to benefit you and Allah did not want to benefit you, you're not going to get anything. 
even if all seven billion of them, you know, were collaborating to help you and Allah did not will it, it's not going to happen. And the, the flip side is correct as well. If all of them wanted to hurt you, but Allah wanted to protect you, they cannot get to you. You have to, you have, that, I mean, that, that part has to be entrenched in our psyche and in our understanding of what it is to be with Allah. That if you are truly obedient to Allah and observant, He will protect you, He will be with you, don't fear anybody else. They cannot get to you. They cannot get to you except with things that Allah has destined to you for your own benefit. We may, we may interpret things as bad, but on the day of judgment, Allah will show us all of these events. All of these things that we thought, my God, why did this happen to me? Why did this, this musibah happen to me? And Allah will show you why it happened and the results that, that it had. And the only thing you will be able to say is Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Ya Allah. Thank you for letting it happen. Because if it did not happen, you would have accused Allah for not taking care of you or not being wise. So it's our understanding that's, that's shaky. So this is, you know, nobody can benefit or harm anyone without Allah's knowledge and will. And if Allah allowed it to happen, it is for something good for you. If you were going astray and you have a problem that gets you back to the straight path, well, I mean, you asked for it. You should have stayed on the straight path. So that's a good thing. That musibah, that, that calamity that fell, that got you back to, to the straight path and to Allah, is a good thing for you. Even if you perceive it as something horrible that happened. The, it's the outcome. It's, it's the result. So anything that, anything that happens, it happens with Allah's leave, with His will. And His will is connected to His wisdom. And his, from His wisdom, only good comes for His, for his creation. بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ in, in, the, in the verse, Allah did not say that in his hand is good and evil. He said only good is in his hand. Because only good results from his actions. So when we know that whatever happens to us is for our benefit, whether we perceive it to be good or bad, now you're on the right track. Now you understand what Tawheed is, what monotheism, what is it to be a servant of Allah. Allah says, I, you know, you sell yourself to me and I'll give you heaven. If you have that contract with Allah, in Allah if, if you have that contract with Allah, then you cannot complain if something happens to you. It's Allah's will. If you go and sell a house, are you going to complain if somebody comes in and demolish some walls and, and change the layout? No. Because you, so, you already sold it. They can do with it whatever they want. And that's how we are. We as believers, we have sold ourselves to Allah in obedience and in doing whatever He wants. And He can do whatever He wants with us. But know that only good comes from Allah. Our dealing with Allah is, is based on very clear terms. Allah is not moody like other people are. Where you, can, you, know, you cannot please them. No matter what you, there are some people, no matter what you do, you cannot please them. Not Allah. Allah Taala is very easy to please. You obey him and he'll be pleased with you. And if he's pleased with you and he is with you, don't, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything or anyone. Rufi'at al-aqlam wa jaffat al-suhf. The pens have been lifted and the ink has dried. It's a done deal. It will not change. That's what it, it, it's saying. That's a metaphor for it's set in stone. It's not going to change. It is only Allah. And the sooner you get that realization to sink in and drive your action, the better it is. You want something? Ask Allah. You're afraid of something? Seek refuge in Allah. Whatever you want, Allah has. And if, and if it's good for you, He will provide it. Ask Him. Rely on him, trust in him, trust in his disposal of affairs because we don't know what's good for us. We want stuff, but we don't know what's good for us. Sometimes we want things that are bad for us. But Allah, if you rely on him 
and you say, Tawakkaltu ala Allah, I rely on you to dispose my affairs, then know that anything that happens to you is going to be for your own good, whether you perceive it or not.